was actually invented by a gentleman called Chuck Hull back in 1986. So as a technology, it's been around a lot longer than probably most members of the public would think. Uh, but obviously it's taken quite some time to get to a mainstream presence like it has today. You have to have a, a, an object to print firstly. And that generally will be a, a 3D CAD file. And what the software does is it slices that file into multiple layers. And each layer will be something like 0.1 of a mil thick. It then sends that data to the 3D printer and it doesn't matter what 3D printer it is of all the different technologies, it just sends slice by slice as such to the printer and it will just print that layer and then it will print the next layer. And eventually you have an object. The materials really um, are dictated by the applications that you're looking to try to create. A lot of the technologies that's out there um, will be printing some type of plastic based object. Some will be materials that can be cast around to create cast metal or cast ceramic objects. You've then also got um, nylon type objects that's got a lot more flexibility. Um, rubber, there's even rubber material, you can print a tyre for argument's sake. There's, and then there's, like I said, there's a whole raft of metal uh, materials as well that's getting created. And I know that further down the line, it's not here just yet, you've got materials that could be elastic and stretch back, all the way through to food based materials that are even on their way. It's largely been used in medical science, um, manufacturing, auto manufacturing and so on, but I think now it's starting to cross that chasm where it's getting into small and medium sized businesses where people are realising it's a great way to prototype products, to experiment and to get things to market a lot quicker. Leading edge schools are starting to have what they call maker spaces in schools and it's a lot like we, what we saw in the 80s with the PC revolution where they're having 3D printers and letting kids experiment with the tools. Traditional manufacturing doesn't enable you to create some of the complex shapes that is possible through um, 3D printing technologies. In the aerospace industry, um, designers have been able to redesign parts of an aeroplane and 3D print those parts and the end part is a lot lighter and more efficient in terms of maybe airflow or fuel flow and what is possible through traditional manufacturing. It seems to be pushing out into lots of different markets and industries and I think that's because of the rapid change in the actual materials that you can run through the printers. It's evolving very quickly and people are finding different opportunities to use it in their business. Based on, um, you know, I guess, industry research uh, and what we're seeing from an opportunity perspective, we're expecting somewhere between 35 to 50% uh, market growth in Australia every year. Yeah, I think it's the most disruptive technology we've seen in the information age. Humans are great at imagining things and what we saw on the internet was people imagining how they could move information and ideas around. 3D printing actually allows us to make ideas become physical realities. Now we can take information and ideas and transform software into physical things. There's no reason to feel threatened. In fact, it's one of the most amazing opportunities. And rather than try and defend against it or worry about the negative impact it might have, we need to get involved and participate in the revolution and help shape it. In fact, if you're clever about it, saying, well, gee, how can we reduce our costs and increase our margin by shipping information or rapid prototyping? How can we use 3D printing to uh, create samples and prototypes and get to market a lot quicker? So it really enables us to use that element of speed. One of the things that's really interesting is trademarks. Counterfeiting products. I mean, someone could scan, let's say, a pair of sunglasses that look exactly like a Ray-Ban and you're in high resolution, print them and so you could go to war like the music industry did and try and fight the tide, but the tide is coming in. It's a great co-creation opportunity. And so brands need to think about that with 3D printing. How can they put out some of their designs and their software and co-create with the audience who then become brand evangelists, marketers, and they disseminate the products because of the 3D printing potentiality. In fact, a lot of companies will start 
shipping information and designs and software and the goods will be manufactured where they're used with the consumer in the place where it's needed. So it's gonna have a really powerful impact on the environment because we no longer need to ship certain goods all around the world. So I believe the value proposition for Conic Minolta um, with 3D printing is the size of our organisation, is what gives us an advantage. We've got a sales force that's based in every major capital city in the country. We've got dealers in all of the regional um, country towns. So we've got a coverage there that nobody else can match at this stage. Well, I think there's a number of things that we, that we bring to the industry that um, it currently um, doesn't have. Uh, you know, we've got a professional uh, sales organisation that work closely with our customers to, to give them great solutions. We are committing to an industry standardised SLA response time, which doesn't exist in the industry at the moment. Also, we're offering um, finance options to customers, which actually allow them to um, gain access to, to equipment in the market they've never had access to before because of, uh, because of the cost of entry. So 3D systems were chosen because of the fact that they've got the broadest range of technology in the industry, the seven different technologies from consumer products uh, right all the way through to metal printing at the, at the end. No other competitor has such a broad offering and for Konica Minolta that means a far wider variety of opportunities and of markets that we can go into and growth that we can bring to the business. My interest is in the human impact that 3D printing can have. Um, so if I could print something, it would be something like a prosthetic or um, something orthopedic or something that has effect on an individual's life. I have to think about it from my son's point of view. He would want me to print the Millennium Falcon most likely because he's a Star Wars nut. Maybe a pair of shoes in all the different colours. If you could 3D print me a nice pair of shoes like this, just on demand, what colour shirt am I wearing? I could do that, it'd be amazing.